we've come up with this idea called the Beer Freedom Index. And I think it's true that the more beer is on the shelf, the more variety on the shelf, the more creative disruption that's tolerated by society is a good measure for whether or not we're free, whether or not we're free enterprise. And if you got no beer on the shelf, you must be a socialist hellhole. I think there's tremendous validity to it. So even though on the surface it looks like the craft beer industry is this extraordinarily unregulated free enterprise uh, industry, it is not. But you see the ability to navigate your way through that and create this uh, unbelievable range of products. And I couldn't imagine, uh, I spent some time in Cuba, I can't imagine in Cuba or Venezuela or unfree countries where you would have the access to the ingredients, the markets, the ability to express your message in a way. And I think it's a very good lead indicator of how free a society is. So in a sense, we have a wall of freedom right behind us. We have us. a wall I mean, of freedom. <laughs> I mean, look at this. I'm, I'm a kid in a candy store. <laughs>
And even though the uh, creativity in the beer was exploding, uh, we were the first to actually bring original art to the beer labels. And like every other craft brewer, we believe that beer was liquid art. And we wanted original art on the label, something really edgy to capture people's imagination. It's part of our DNA. It's just part of who we are. We were very fortunate that Ralph uh, did the first two labels for us. The first two were the doggy style with now our iconic bat wings and the road dog label. Uh, these were in 1995. We got these transparencies and just laughed. It was like kids at Christmas getting these labels. And so Ralph splashed on here. You have these friends in Colorado doing a brewery and they're going to make good beer. No shit. Splashes this on the label. We loved it. We printed it. And a fellow brewer in Colorado filed a complaint with the Colorado Liquor Commission. So here's, the, here's an example of competitors using government regulation to try to beat up on a competitor because the beer got tremendous attention and the label art and got so much great press they thought, well, we'll just file a complaint that shit is obscenity. Of course it's not, but the Colorado Liquor Commission said, well, here's the deal. You may think it's art. We have a complaint. We're saying it's obscenity. Pull those 15,000 cases or we'll revoke your license. That's a quarter million dollars worth of beer. If we didn't have deep pockets, this would be the unseen part. You'd never see Flying Dog uh, like you do today. We did pull the beer. We ran Good Beer, No Censorship. We worked with Mark Silverstein, the regional director of the ACLU, took it to the Colorado Supreme Court. Six years later, uh, the ruling, of course, was in our favor. Uh, went back to Good Beer, No Shit. Had a nice press conference at the top of the tattered cover, the First Amendment room. I don't recall who it was, but when they asked the crowd, why? Mr. Silverstein, with the ACLU, with its limited resources and with injustice in the world, perhaps people on death row uh, incorrectly convicted, why would the ACLU use up its limited resources on something as sophomoric, as seemingly trivial as a beer label? And this is what comes down to basic rights of people. Uh, and when it comes to the loss of constitutional freedoms, they're always lost at the, at the edge. They're chipped away at bit by bit. And his comment was, where there's smoke under the door, the fire's not far behind. This is about so much more than a beer lake. Here's a quick peek, you might be interested in this. This is the one vessel that's unique to the brewing industry. So the mash uh, is transferred into the louder ton. It has a false bottom so that the uh, water gets circulated through here as we're extracting the sugars. And then we add various specialty malts that impart both color and uh, different flavors to, to beers. Ah, oh, that is such a sweet smell. And your labels again and again have become battlegrounds for the question of free speech. Michigan banned one of my favorite beers, Raging Bitch. <laughs> and, I, and I wonder, yeah. like, you, you, me you mentioned the link between basically crony capitalism, like you, you, one of your competitors tried to screw you in, in Colorado. Sure. Is, is, is that part of what this attack on free speech is all about? You have a couple different things going. So if you go back to well, the 18th Amendment, the noble experiment prohibition, which was repealed by the 21st, there was some confusion. States had a very limited right to regulate the importation of alcohol. They took it to mean, though, they had this broad ability to ignore other constitutional freedoms and uh, not just the Interstate Commerce Clause, but others. And over the years, because it's a vice uh, and because you have uh, a, lot of, a lot of people on liquor boards who, uh, even though they have a constitutional background, uh, didn't really understand um, the, uh, what, what the freedom of expression applied to beer labels. Yeah, they, for decades, they would, they would look at it and pass judgment on the art, the name, uh, the political correctness of it, and reject it. And it's a big deal to sue a state. It's expensive, it takes years, and you're suing a regulator. Yeah. So there's that uh, worry about retribution. Yeah. Uh, we did, uh, we just don't back off. Michigan rejected raging bitch. Uh, this, the Colorado ruling was at the state court level, we sued Michigan at the federal court level. Uh, it took six years, went up to the federal court of appeals level and the ruling was in our favor. Uh, it's, it's political correctness. It's, um, in Michigan's case, anything with the name bitch. It was ridiculous, and including Bitches Brew by our friends at Dogfish Head. Did they ban the, the, the album from Miles Davis, or it wasn't under their jurisdiction? Interestingly enough, and it's not in their transcript, my question was, well, I'm just wondering, you know, did you ban Bitches Brew? Well, we can't talk about that. 
But if you could, if you had the authority, would you? Yes, we would. Wow. They would ban bitches brew. Yet bastard was okay. So arrogant bastard, dirty uh, bastard, backwoods bastard, those were fine. It's completely subjective. So you have bureaucrats, appointed bureaucrats, based on their personal opinions and whims, just pronouncing judgment on what they don't like. So there's just no end, end to that. Um, when it came to Raging Bitch, what's odd is I could write a book named Raging Bitch or do a movie or a piece of art, but a beer suddenly falls under this jurisdiction where it can be banned. Uh, if Michigan were my only state, it could have put us out of business like in Colorado. Instead, you fight it for six years. Um, but it set a definitive ruling that freedom of expression applies to beer labels. So after decades of states really just bullying brewers, uh, this ruling set an important precedent. What I love about the end of that story is you took the money from the settlement and created a First Amendment foundation. We did. So uh, first and foremost, this wasn't about the publicity. We didn't want just one big splash in the news. We wanted to continue this extremely important conversation about a value, the master value of freedom of speech. We created the First Amendment Society. The First Amendment Society is separate from Flying Dog. Aaron, the director, is working with the University of Maryland on a scholarship for investigative journalism. Uh, we find partnerships, uh, for example, with endowing uh, students to write articles about freedom of speech in the colleges, work with uh, Greg Lukianoff, Can We Take a Joke, to support the launch of that movie. Because, unfortunately, it seems to me that American history and civics have just been erased from the curriculum in schools these days. And people don't appreciate what freedom of speech means. It comes down to, oh, yelling fire in a crowded theater or something like that and don't realize that it truly is the last defense against tyranny. And if you're defending it at that point, it's too late.